Beyond the Demi Castle is your instant match reaction for Everton 1, Luton Town 2. Can you believe it? 30 second summary goes to Matt Flusk this week. Matt, go. Uh, well, I think we wanted to win. Like as far, Obviously, we wanted to win. We expected to win, but realistically, it's a newly promoted side and we never beat them at home, do we? So, realistically, we should have seen it coming. We had 20 good minutes. They soaked up the pressure, hit us with the 1-2, and then after that, it was just, it was dire. I would describe the first half as cry laugh emoji and the second half as just just cry laugh just cry emoji basically uh, like we, we never really seem to get close and yeah it's just very demoralising thank God for this 90,000 minutes of injury time because it means that everyone can get back to the pub and still see the last couple of seconds on the telly before we just go right let's drink ourselves into oblivion yeah so we will be doing that uh, I've got in addition to Matt I've got Mark Mosey Connor Bennett, Emma Kosh and Laura Gates with us. Uh, Laura, how, I mean, I feel like Matt was very diplomatic there. I am, I am full of rage <laughs> after that performance. How are you feeling? I can't believe you said cry and laugh in emoji. I'm <laughs> currently like, well, I think I am crying laugh in emoji now, but I was fully just like angry emoji before. But I think I went into that game so fucking naive, you know. I was sat in the pub before the game and I was joined by a couple of Luton fans and... They were really, really confident. Like, and it's to the point where it actually scared me. For a, like, I was like sat there thinking, you know what, we actually could, we could lose this today. I don't know whether it was just sort of all the build up from the past week of like, obviously we were off the back of two wins, two away wins as well. And also, you know, for the most part, that Villa performance was a really strong performance from Everton. So I, I, for the first time in ages, I was actually enjoying watching Everton I thought you know what today could be quite nice how stupid am I <laughs> honestly I like properly properly naive going into that today thinking yeah this this will be nice the weather will be nice we'll all be up for this <laughs> got off the train at Kirkdale the heavens open walked up like sort of trudged up to the ground and thought yeah there's only, there is only one way this is going and those Luton fans sat in the Denby pre-game were absolutely correct uh, come to you first, mate. Uh, I feel like Everton were really good for 20 minutes and then just completely forgot how to play any kind of football. Yeah, it was superb. I, I don't think there was anything wrong with, with the first 20, 25 minutes and it looked like everything was in place. And then as soon as Luton had their first unmarked header from a corner, clearly it's a done thing to do emojis. I'll go with a monkey with hands over eye emoji because <laughs> I knew what was coming. I couldn't watch. Um, Luton have one massive threat and that's their gigantic number nine and the fact that we left him unmarked multiple times for set pieces is hilarious uh, and that's what cost us today a bizarre decision making uh, a real lack of confidence between goal one and goal two where all the positivity just dissipated and then running after running out of ideas in the, in the second half and when, when there's seven minutes of added on time an opposition have decided to just sit back and let it happen the fact that we didn't have any sort of meaningful chances in that period is shameful. Um, and yes, OK, I'm sure Sean Dyche will have said something about being the best side and playing well enough to win yet again. But yet again, we go away with zero points. And I think it's telling that, that Rob Edwards has come out in his post-match interview and has said that he came into the match full of confidence. He's the manager of a side that have one point and have really not been on a level par with any team so far. But they knew they could get something today because we're Everton and we do not learn. And once again, we've lost. Yeah, I just thought uh, as soon as they scored, we were just so panicked across the whole team. Like uh, Tarkowski and Brantwaite were arguing over the, the first goal when that lock here knocked it in. Like they're arguing together like four uh, headers. Like some, no, one had, no one had won a header from the four corners on our side. It was just really embarrassing. And then we got the goal. And I thought, oh, what, I thought we might get something here. But then as soon as that ball went back to Garner and the corner... Sorry, forgive us, Matt Flusk is just screaming for a Liverpool red card here on the telly. Be a red here, you know, I that? mean, let's just stick to our game for now, but Connor, go on. <laughs> yeah, he's going to the monitor. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so, like, as soon as it went back to the corner, you know, Garner and Garner, like, there was absolutely zero on the ball. And I thought at half-time when it changed up Harrison, it made a lot of sense because I thought Harrison will get down the wing and we'll get a few balls in, but... He seemed, a bit, he seemed a bit afraid to go past someone and I just thought for, for a good hour for a good hour we felt like we were playing for the last five minutes where it was get the ball long and try and do something and it was just 
there was zero semblance of an attack and plan up other than get it long and we didn't even hit the, the two big lads up top and our wingers wouldn't go past anyone so what are you going to do? I'm just going to wait for this decision to be given first. Uh, Curtis Young has been sent off. Uh, Everton are back baby. <laughs> uh, let's, get back to, let's get back to our depressing chat about the match. Uh, Mose, uh, you, you were late getting to the ground today. Yeah. Uh, do you want to just tell people about your arrival time and what your conversation well, with the steward outside? I, I joked about this um, pre-game because the last time I tried to do this and arrived late, Everton were 3-0 down against Wigan Athletic in the FA Cup. Um, so knowing that I was going to be in a similar time situation today, to be told by the steward on 35 minutes outside the ground that we were in fact no longer 1-0 down, but in fact 2-0 down as I walked in the turnstile, <laughs> was probably the darkest moment of the afternoon. I thought so at that time. Um, but to go in and watch the remaining 65 minutes just compounded the misery. Um, I, I've known Everton or a bad football team for a few years now, but I think most of us have always had that thing in the back of our head that we are just falsely shite at the moment, and ultimately we will find some pieces that click together. We'll find a manager who manages to, to bring some emblems of an identity that we actually want to be going forward, and we might actually see some level of progression. And we'll all talk about those dark years in the early 20s where we were bad, but it wasn't meant to be like that. Um, today, today was probably the game that I fully, wholeheartedly, 100% realised that we are just really, really bad now. Um, you know, and we've sat here after certain games and, you know, we've been beaten by shit at home before and we've all said, God, look how bad we are now. But I think I always naively still had in the back of my mind that th th this wasn't Everton. It was just one of those horrible Benitez infused phases that we had to go through before it got better again. Um, you know, you look at the league table now and I think ev everyone to a man would say the bottom of the table looks now as it kind of will at the end of the season. We are very much in the five, aren't we? We, we are not in the top 15. Uh, and it's it just to, to look back on the last few weeks of a season where we thought we had a relatively, in inverted commas, easy start. We, we've played absolutely no one. We've played two teams who, in history, we will probably look back and say they were some of the worst sides in, in Premier League folklore. We've got one point against them. I and mean, the only reason we've got that is our best player is our goalkeeper. Um, to, to think of Sheffield United and Luton, I, I, I honestly, you know, I think Laura mentioned about naively going into this game and thinking we might be able to, to put a couple of wins together. I, I don't think as Evertonians, as a group, we look at these fixtures anymore and think, right, here we go. I, I think other teams look at Everton and think, well, that's our chance for a first win. That's our chance for a first point at home. You know, they can be bullied. On paper, it, it's always been the same story. We've got some names that other teams probably look at and think, do you know what, they're actually a good player. But they're really not. There's no one in that squad anymore beyond Pickford and even being generous, Calvert-Lewin. Who, who any other team in the Premier League would look at and think we can make a player out of him you know and, and I, I include some very high figures in terms of players we've brought in now and you know I'm not going to talk about individual players because we'd be here until the sun sets about, about players not being good enough for Everton anymore but there's one individual who is certainly not good enough for Everton and it's the manager and you know I, I, I won't buy into people commenting saying well who, who do we go and get who's next who's next on this merry-go-round quite frankly we, we, we somehow survived last season and sent a team down in Burnley who got onto the fact that Sean Dice wasn't actually a very good manager we've brought him in we've bought a couple of yard dog players who will fit his system we are now stuck in this weird scenario where all the things that Sean Dice is meant to be good at we are actually very very bad at namely defending and getting crosses into the box how many times has an opposition goalkeeper caught a football at Goodison Park this year um, you know Ashley Young meant to be great at set pieces Jack Harrison was only he only played half an hour today and already his crossing looks like it's just evaporated into the lower bullens Every, everything about the club unfortunately is broken and we are sat here what still clinging on to September 
thinking we just hope that there's three teams worse than us. Uh, but sadly, we've played two of them and bullied by them. So where, where we go from here as a club, I honestly don't know. But I think for the next seven months, we're just going to be looking around thinking, I hope that there's three worse teams than us. And do you know what? The, the league is that shit that we might just prevail. Just going to throw some Matt Fusker has finished celebrating Curtis Jones' red card now. And he's ready to talk about Everton. Well... I, I did mention, I think that rules him out of the derby. To which Emma Kosh went, yay. He's like, yeah, good point, Ed. Um, I mean, if we're going to have any kind of enjoyment about Wednesday, you've got to give the manager credit for that. Like, no one expected him to put five at the back and the system he put out. And he completely outfought and out-tacticked Unai Emery, who was regarded as one of the best tactical managers. Well, do you look at that today with that result they've got to think that game is different with Ollie Watkins playing? I, d- I don't know. I don't think what happened today was on the manager at all. I think there was individual performances out there which if you'd seen them on Wednesday with one exception if you'd seen them on Wednesday you wouldn't have expected that today. Amadou and Arna was anonymous for large periods. Didn't want to get stuck in. Didn't want to get involved. Like, I don't know why Patterson didn't start but yeah, that is on the manager. There was, there was uh, Mikolenko probably had a poor game overall. There was a couple of performances. I mean, it just again is the one I really want to talk about, though. I don't understand why he's still starting games for us. One of the other guys might have mentioned him, but it's just no. Well, yeah, actually, you know what? Sack Sean Dice right now. No, but seriously, like it just again is just he gets played around by by teams. They play around him. He does because they know he's either going to jump in rashly and they can just knock it sideways and take him out of the game for that move, or he's just going to stand there pointing. I don't understand at all what he brings to any side. Do you know what though? Like I, I usually agree with you about it just a game, but I thought we were so much worse when he came off today. Like it was like it was like the grown up had come off the pitch and like those two children in midfield. Then it was like. Because Garner and Anana just they didn't seem to know who was meant to be getting the ball, who was meant to be doing what. And like, he's not ideal just again, he's nowhere near the player he was. But I think he at least brings, like, again, I'm not like a huge fan of him, but I think he brings something in there. I don't quite know what it is, but I think that's that first half at Doncaster where they were horrendous. And then he came on, and I was like, all right, this is better all of a sudden. And today, today when he came off, it was like, I, I was more confident that he was coming back today to win when we were 2-0 down with him on the pitch than when it was 2-1 and he wasn't on the pitch if that makes sense like, it, the midfield just felt a bit in the second half felt him there Decore was different so if, if you had Berko, Jimmy Onana and Decore I think that puts us in a better position in the middle of the park we did look a bit all at sea with only the two midfields Decore didn't have the best game but I still wouldn't unless he had some kind of a tweak or something we don't know but I wouldn't have brought him off personally I would have left the three in midfield and then had two wingers. But I, I just don't think that the managerial decisions were the big deciding factor. I think it was just the energy. We didn't have the energy after the first 20 minutes of getting in the faces like we did on Wednesday with Villa. We kind of stood off them, let them play up the wings a bit, and it was just a bit complacent, I think it was. We were complacent after the first 20 minutes. We thought, these are crap. We can run these off the park. And then within seven minutes, they put two against us. For the second goal, I don't know if one of the other lads mentioned it, I was screaming. He couldn't hear me because I'm in the upper gladness. I was screaming at Bigfoot. Jordan, get on your line. Get on your line. It's a floater ball in from a set piece with a high offside line. Why is he standing six yards out of his goal? He's not going to come and catch it. He should be on his line. So when that ball comes in on the volley or half volley, he's on his line and he can tip it around the post. It's past him before he even reacts. I don't know why he was that far out. And I don't criticise Jordan Pickford often. I think it was more on the... Because Mikolenko at the back post, who should have just no, marked, marked he the get shot away. But if he does, I don't know why the goalkeeper has to be that far out for a set piece that's floated over. Because what's he doing there? Um, Laura, we, obviously, it was very bad to start off with. They went 2-0 two, two up. Yeah. We got back into it just before our time. And you, I, think, I think everyone around me was going, we need one before our time here. We got it. Eventually, after that VAR decision, which took took forever and ever and ever, yeah. second half he melted. Um, Honestly, I don't know any other. I don't know of any other team that could quite possibly be like that. The amount of times, like we sort of, we get a little bit of momentum, and then I don't know what they do at half time. 
you think, OK, it's 2-1, we're still losing. Yeah, but did but, you, do you think the change was right, bringing Harrison on, bringing Jesse Gay on? Well, I personally wouldn't. I'm, I'm in the sort of, you know, do not like address a Garner Gay camp, and I think that's where I go back to there are decisions that are on the manager. Um, and probably, I, d- I was looking at the stats before, and they're not looking good for the home form since Daesh has taken over. It's pretty fucking abysmal, if I'm honest. We haven't scored more than one in a game. Scored, yeah, I was just going to say, we haven't scored more than one in a game. And we just looked today completely bullied out of the game by Luton. At one point, I'm not even joking, I started counting how many players were on the pitch because I genuinely felt like we were at least a man or two down. They were just all over us. And we don't look like we want to fight for anything. And I, the amount of times we've sort of spoken about that as well while we've been sat in the pub or wherever and we've spoken about how we just do not look up for anything at all and I think that's you know there was also another stat about X or a comment from Daesh post-match there about um, XG as well which has not impressed me I just, honest to God it's great isn't it that oh, people are like yeah we're, we're making chances but it means absolutely fuck all if we're not putting them away if I have to see a Drissa Garner Gay shoot from outside the box again like that I swear to God I'd be do- I'd- I'd- put me in his position and I'll do a hell of a lot better than him and I also won't shit my pants when I see a rainbow flag that, that chance wound me up today because it's like he had the entire right hand side of the goal to aim at and he tried to put it in the left, the tight left hand side I think the problem with that is I don't think for me I don't think there's anyone anyone in our midfield that I think could get the ball in that position and actually do anything with it I, I, I honestly don't think like that Anana as well he's another one that's he's another one that is, is, has done that on countless occasions now and do you know what I, I do quite like Anana but he does not frustrate the hell out of me at times every every week there's something he does that just really winds me up but it just oh, I, I can't hear myself thinking here if I'm honest Stressing me out, all of it. Everton are stressing me out. These gang of red, <laughs> lovely, lovely neighbours of ours, Reds, kicking off all the time. But I just, it's so frustrating every week. It's so frustrating. And if we can't beat Bournemouth next week, then I, I think, and I, I, I know there's no money there, but I, what else can you do? We can't keep up this terrible, terrible run of form, especially at home. Yeah. Um. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, Lowe's sort of touched on it there. Like, I think when you get Sean Dice, you sign up for the bad footy and the, it can be painful at times. But I think you'd also want to sign up for the defensive solidity and being good at set pieces and, and all that that comes with it as well. And we're still waiting for our first clean sheet of the season. We played some absolute dross at home. We played, as Mo said, probably the two worst teams in the league at the moment. It, you know, even that time, it's not working, is it? I think set piece is the big one for me because it's it's exactly what you expect from the Deitch blueprint, which is solidity and having a plan when the set piece is coming play. We look at Arsenal; they they understood that they could take their time with their short corners and then work around us, and we didn't wake up to that fact. Luton today, they played a direct game; they made use of their set pieces. They aimed it for the big man; the big man created the goals, and we didn't deal with it. It was very strange. It's just the one thing that you expect Deitch to iron out. But we are putting him in a box a bit and we expect him to play this hoof ball and he's not really playing hoof ball. We're trying to play counter-attack in football. Um, so maybe we, we've misinterpreted what he can actually do. Uh, but there's, there, there are just there are clear things now which need to be changed and, and Deitch, one stereotype about him that is true is he's very stubborn and there are some things he needs to change like playing Garner on the right wing. It doesn't work. It simply doesn't work. He's effective in the middle. Play him in the middle. If you're going to put long balls in towards Calvert-Lewin have someone who can get the second ball we didn't have anyone who could get the second ball Dom Calvert-Lewin was winning uh, was winning flick-ons and he was flicking them on to nobody at all um, and if I were in charge I would just just ban Garner Gray from shooting at all <laughs> two, two yards out open goal he has to pass honestly I cannot watch it was making me cry um, but that's the frustrating thing, I think, especially when you think about the, the quality of player we actually managed to bring on, which is quite unusual for us in recent times, is we did have some game changers come onto the pitch. There's, there are, there's hope there, and that's what makes it even more frustrating. So I think Deitch needs to reflect now 
Uh, maybe he needs to do his, his little post-game audit or go around with questionnaires or whatever he likes to do and, 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 and have, his, um, have his quarterly catch-ups, his one-to-one to the players and, and figure it out because I, I think as has been said, as Mark said really well, there are a lot of bad teams in this league. We don't have to do a huge amount. And one win is transformative. You look at Luton today, their first win in it was it seventh game of the season and they're I don't, out of I don't think they'll get many more no certainly not away from home uh, I think we've uh, been our classic charitable selves but that, that's the margin between failure and success it, it, you, you really can push yourself to safety in this league with not very much at all and he's got to make sure now that he's not proud he learns and that he corrects these mistakes because we can't lose to Bournemouth we cannot lose to Bournemouth if we do, we're going into an Anfield derby, probably in the relegation zone. That's when everyone starts to panic. And it, it's gonna, the next month or so is going to tell us whether we have any chance at all of pulling the way or whether it's going to be the same as last season. And my heart cannot take it. Just start to wrap this up now. Connor, what would you put on an Everton and Arnold's questionnaire? <laughs> <laughs> um, what, a, a question to ask any new manager or asking the players if I'm asking a new manager I'm asking like any chance of playing a different formation other than 4-5-1 um, I think another big issue we got wrong today was Decore worked very well away from home where he has a bit more space and licence to do a bit more off the strike and I think today against a team that needed a bit more creativity like he was just a bit of a not wasted shape but he was never going to play up to sort of the levels we need from Decore and it was just really poor today and I echo everything they've said about Gay and Onar in the midfield there's something's got to be looked at there and he'll probably come out and say oh we had our moments and we did but I, I, you can't lose that sort of game and I think he's very lucky now that we've not got money to sort of start looking at replacing them because I think that's seven from eight now he's lost at home and maybe I think it's two wins in 13 or something like that he's he does need putting under a microscope but he's going to get a lot of time so what can you do final way to you Moes where do we go from here after that um, all, I can, all I can kind of visualise in my head is how I felt in late July with that ridiculous sense of optimism about the, the early run of games being fairly palatable um, I, I honestly did look at Luton and Bournemouth next week and Sheffield United a couple of weeks ago and thought if we can get 10 points, God forbid, on the board by October, then we might actually have a, a shot at not being one of those seasons. Uh, and I think right now, obviously, we'd have all bitten your hand off for a really mundane, boring 13th place finish. Um, we, we are sadly a team and a club who consistently find a way to make it all an uphill battle. And it doesn't look like it's going to be any different. Um, it, it doesn't take much, does it, to come away from Brentford last week to how you feel now and think well Bournemouth at home looks like an enormous uphill task next week um, it's it's very very difficult and I think I'd, I'd, I'd hang something on to I'd, I'd hang something on to January if, if the, the whole backroom situation was any different thinking we can make some form of improvements personnel wise but We've already seen, haven't we, certain players thinking, well, I'm, I'm not up for staying here, I'm not up for finishing my contract. You know, someone like Awobi, for example, who I'm not going to champion now after saying he's been pretty poor for the last couple of years. But we, we've, I think the quality that we have got will probably start to, to kind of eke away because th- there, is a, there is a growing sense of people just not being arsed with, with kind of trying to bring this back for us now. And, you know... I, I can, I can all, I'm almost scared of how Bournemouth players will feel looking at this now. I know they've had a bad result today, but we, we are we are the, the medicine for an, 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 a failing football team, aren't we? Everyone looks at... It's Dr. Everson, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, Luton obviously will know that their times are rocky, but I can guarantee they looked at game week seven or whatever we are and thought, we'll terrify them. And, and you know, we, we've seen it all before in, in teams of... They need a dose of Everton to, to somehow bring them back, but uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be very very difficult. Um, you know, the the thing that the thing that runs very true to me is that 
the style of play and the standard of what Everton are for that 90 minutes, it's not going to change as long as Sean Dyche is here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not coming on here on the back of two positive results now that we've had one negative one saying we'll flippantly sack the manager because he was awful today. But I, I, I just... That's just me as a, you know, as a very naive Evertonian thinking that's not what I want my football team to look like. Uh, and I know it's very easy to say that on the back of a, a bad result, but I feel like even when we manage to scrape results, it's just, it's by hook and crook. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll scrape our goals and we'll somehow fumble our way 30 or 40 yards up the pitch. But is, is Sean Dyche's Everton something that we're really ever going to buy into? Is he, is he the man that we envisage taking us into Bramley Moor? Um, you know, I, I know that we're not necessar- necessarily the most attractive proposition for anyone at the moment, but um, th- th- this is all just a desperate talk of a man who wants it to be different. Uh, and, and, and sadly, sadly, uh, the, the kind, that kind of difference and that next step, it feels further away than ever. Um, I don't know who I feel more sorry for us or the lads from 777 who were in the main stand watching that today thinking I'm spending actual millions of pounds on this um, if, if they've got any else about them they'll be in the boardroom knocking about 10 or 15 million off that but um, you know it, it, it's things like that it, it's you know all of the backroom drama that goes on it's very hard to pick yourself up for one individual match as, as a match going fan it's very difficult to pick yourself up for a season or you know to to say well we've had a bad result but we go again next week we've been here for four years of absolute misery now um, and uh, you know it, it, it was all fun and games when we could welcome the bus and the blue flares were ringing us up but I, I think all, all of that goodwill is obviously gone now and we saw that last season um, and I think I, I, I'm struggling I, I am really struggling to think where the next positive change comes from because I think we all, again, naively thought that if we bring someone like Harrison in and we get Calvert-Lewin back fit, we'll start to look like a functioning football team again. But today couldn't have been any further away from that. Yeah, uh, we'll leave it there anyway. I think we talked about that horror show enough. Oh, go on. I was going to mention Neville Southall. Oh, go on. So, Laura, you, you got to meet Neville Southall today? Not for the first time. We're now, oh, right. we're now best mates. Anyway, I was ch- we were talking before and I'd said, like... Oh, I haven't seen us win this season. Like, all the games I've missed this season, we have actually won, and I'm talking home away. And he went, well, I hope you're not going today then. And I was like, he, 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 he told me not to go today. And I honestly, why why did I defy him? Why, should not have listened to Everton's greatest why ever. Would I never, why did I ignore his advice? I should have just stayed in the pub and let everyone else enjoy their lovely win because we would have won if it wasn't for me. There you go. Uh, it's all Laura Gator's fault. Anyway, cheers for tuning in. Terrible day for the Blues. We'll speak to you again soon.